Today I have a little bit different review, but one that I think you'll find interesting. Today I'm looking at the Xiaomi I Internet of Things Mija Air Quality Monitor and Tester. It can measure temperature, total organic volatile compounds, humidity, CO2 level, and the amount of 2.5 micron or larger particles in the air. If you have allergies or asthma like I do, I think this is something you'll be interested in. Thanks to Banggood for sending this to me to take a look at. Now a little bit of preface on this. I was looking to kind of solve an air quality issue at work and looking for an affordable way to do it, looking for air quality meters and things like that when I ran across this one and uh, asked Banggood if I could try it out and they said sure. So here is the box that it comes in and it's a very Apple-esque box. You got a white, it's got a picture of the product on the front. On the uh, side here, it's got all the different things it measures. And this box and product is designed for the Chinese market. The meter comes packaged in here like this. You get a manual that's all in Chinese and you get a USB to USB-C cable here to power it. So taking a look at it here, and I hope the reflection on the screen's not too bad. I have the volume, I have the brightness of the monitor here turned up. So hopefully you can see. Um, it is made of a white glossy plastic here. The screen is touch screen as you can see. And you can swipe and touch on it, which is pretty cool. On each end you have um, air holes to allow it to breathe and air to enter the device to do the different measuring. On the back you've got your USB-C charging port. On the bottom here you have kind of a rubber grip and I assume product information there in Chinese. And at the top you've got a power button. This uh, also has a rotation sensor so you can have it in portrait or you can kind of have it in this vertical format. You get less information in the vertical format. Um, I'm not sure if it affects accuracy either because it does block one of the holes at the bottom but it is an option, it changes your color scheme. I personally prefer this view the best because I can see all the different things it measures on one screen and I can just check in and see what's going on. You've also got a brightness sensor there and this does have a battery inside and in my experience in the automatic settings this lasts for about four hours. So setup here is pretty interesting. This light is designed for the Chinese market in mind and because of that there's a few things you should know. First in setup it comes with is uh, it comes in Chinese language by default but the, one of the first things you can do is change it to English, so that's not really an issue. It does want you to connect to your Wi-Fi network, and it only works on 2.4 gigahertz, and you have to manually type in your Wi-Fi key. So if uh, it's like me, and you've got a really long random password with a lot of the numbers and symbols and things, then it, it's a little bit hard to do, but it looks like a standard Android keyboard. So not so bad. You've also got the ability to connect it to the Mija app here. Here I have it on my phone, what the Mija app looks like. And the thing you do need to know that because this is a Chinese market device, when you get this app and get it all set up, you won't find this app if you're not in China. That's because your profile is set to not China. So that's easy to change. You click the profile button here on Android, just scroll down and you go to settings and then you scroll down to region and you change it from, in my case, USA to China. And when you do that, the app will restart. And in my case, it'll want you to log back in and then you're able to find the app and join it to the app. Everything else pretty much works. Uh, no major problems there. You just scan the QR code of the device um, it joins it and it all works pretty easily, assuming they're on the same network. Now I'll quickly go through the app here. When you've got it joined, you'll see different numbers and they update fairly close in real time. You can see here, this is reading 1.9, this is reading 3.8 still, now it's 1.3. You can come down, the uh, phone is a much better uh, comparison of the graph of the different uh, air quality you've got and it kind of predicts them and charts them. And I can log different days and kind of show where it's at. I can do a week. I can do a month if you've got that much data. And then you scroll over and you see different, um, different concentrations of things here. So in my case, I took this to work today and we can see the volatile organic compounds at work are a lot less. Um, I'll be resetting my volatile organic compound sensor when I'm done with this review to see if I can bring that a little bit more in line because I don't believe 
at home I've got as much. And you can click explanation here on the app and it'll read more. You got temperature and humidity on here too. And it reads your different data. Overall, it's a decent app. Um, you can manage different information about it, um, firmware updates, things like that. So for me, accuracy is pretty decent. I've got another uh, device here that I use in my house to measure my humidity and my temperature. And we can see the temperature there at the bottom, 74 is spot on, 74.1. That's acceptable to me. But the biggest problem I have is humidity on my unit. That's not a parameter that I can reset. And the Xiaomi here, or Xiaomi, um, reads about 10% high, between seven and 10%. Um, I'm in my basement right now and I'm running my dehumidifier, trying to get this below 50%. And we can see the accurate meter is 53%. And this agrees with other things that I've got in my house, but the uh, Xiaomi is showing 60. Other than that, I think it's pretty accurate. Like I said, you can reset the total organic uh, compound counter, and I think I'll do that. Um, CO2, I think, seems to be fairly accurate. And the uh, particle counter here, 2.1, I think is fairly accurate as well. The biggest notice I difference, the biggest thing I notice when that goes up is if I've been cooking in the house, if I'm frying something or doing something aromatic, or especially something that smokes, that count goes way up. Let me just do a quick little test here. I've got some rubbing alcohol, which should make that organic compound sensor go nuts. We'll just see how long it takes to react. I've got it on a tissue here. And while that's taking time here, I can click through and show you the different screens. Um, since this is a US, or since this is a Chinese market device, it should show the weather information, but since I'm in the US and it can't locate me properly, it's not able to do that. We've got your parts per million counter, and just like the app here, you can click in and see a graph and more information and time zone. And then if you go back, you can click on the number and then it reads a little bit more about what these are. This is used in the Chinese scale, so it's uh, not US or EPA compliant. And here we go, here's the total volatile organic compounds with that alcohol sitting there. That number's over two, which is quite high. Your CO2 number is super high as well. These two sensors work together. Um, so no wonder they're really high, like yeah, CO2 maxed out. Obviously, I'm doing that with, uh, I'm faking it by putting chemicals right next to it. That's not actually accurate. Otherwise, I wouldn't be uh, alive to record this review. You've got temperature, humidity, same type of thing. But as I mentioned, this is my favorite mode here, show everything mode. My conclusion is that for anyone who has trouble with indoor air quality or likes data, I think this will be a fun meter to put on your desk to see what's going on. While it didn't help me solve my air quality issues at work completely like I was hoping, because it doesn't show exactly what's wrong, it allowed me to rule out things and see that humidity wasn't a problem, organic compounds weren't a problem, and that CO2 numbers were reasonable. So overall it did help, but just didn't completely solve my issue. Um, other than the humidity sensor on mine, I think it's fairly accurate. It seems to agree with other equipment that I have in other normal ranges. I do think software is one area for improvement here. Make it more localized for other parts of the world. Get the ability to decide ranges on when you want notifications to occur in the app. For the US, I'd prefer US standard ranges versus Chinese ranges, but overall pretty decent. If you're interested, I'll have a link in the description below. Please make sure you check it out, give it a click, and see what it's like on Banggood's website, as it does help me to bring future reviews like this to you. What do you guys think about me maybe testing more equipment like this? I've had a radiation detector on my mind for the future. Let me know in the comments below what you think.